Thank you all. Thank you, Colin. I humbly accept this recognition for my 52 years of volunteer service, political and social activism in wildlife conservation. This work has been an affair of my heart and my spiritual conscience for over half a century. So I accept this not only for myself, but for those tireless, unnamed volunteers and activists across America who share my passion and my concern for wildlife. The focus of my next book is on threatened and endangered species and how to eliminate the major flashpoints in applying the Endangered Species Act through cooperative conservation. I've become deeply troubled in my research by the effects the intensifying loss of species will have on our children and future generations, and by the effects that genocide will, will have on them. Now, I'm using a grisly, ghastly, and graphic metaphor to get your attention. I'm not talking about genocide. I'm talking about genocide, the loss of species of endangered wildlife, flora, and fauna. Please understand the distinction that I'm making. Genocide is the conscious, repulsive, monstrous destruction of a distinct human ethnic group. Their government, their centuries-old historical and religious sites, museums, libraries, archives, their educational systems, anything that perpetuates and memorializes the culture and history of a specific ethnic group of people. I've conceived the word genocide to convey the agonizing concerns I feel about the loss of certain species and the effects it will have on our children and future generations. Genus is a word used in taxonomy, in taxonomy classifying animals and plants, specifically the major grouping of related species or subspecies. When an intentional act of man threatens or endangers a species or their habitat, which then kills them, that's genocide. When industrial man's blitzkrieg to strip the earth of its natural resources, destroying the habitat and food sources of a group of animals, which in turn kills them, that's genocide. And when species become extinct, because their habitat is fragmented, destroyed or poisoned by man, that's genocide. Now, there are some who will say, ah, but extinction is an inherent and natural part of evolution. It's inevitable. And I agree. But man's actions in accelerating extinction is not inevitable. We can do something about controlling man's actions in the name of achieving, of achieving human progress. The after effects of genocide are no less devastating than genocide. To lose a species is to lose part of the natural world, a piece of our planet's natural history and the biodiversity that sustains it. The death of an entire species through extinction is profound leaving a void that fundamentally alters the relationship of other life forms. Worse yet, a break in the, divide, in the biodiversity change, the interwoven web of life, creates a cultural void in the historical memory of the planet, in human memory, and in our value system. And for our kids and future generations, it's stolen from them. Stolen. Gone forever. <coughs> Let me share with you some poignant examples. John J. Audubon and Lewis and Clark all chronicled the passenger pigeon, whose migratory flights would blacken the skies for days. Now, I never saw that epic bird in flight. I never saw a gray hawk, or a heath hen, or a Carolina parakeet, or an ivory-billed woodpecker, or a California golden bear. Because these species are all gone extinct forever. I would hope with continued aggressive conservation efforts, our kids and their kids can see a red wolf, a Florida panther, and a California condor, 
or a trumpeter swan or whooping crane in the wild one day. I would hope they'll be able to watch honeybees pollinate flowers, chase monarch butterflies in total abandon. I hope they'll chase fireflies in summer nights with their grandparents. For if we lose these endangered and threatened species, our children will suffer even more the effects of genocide. And their inheritance from our generation will be an empty ark. That could happen. All it takes is the continued apathy, indifference, and ecological myopia of mankind to the slow destruction of species habitats in a quest to profit from the extraction of nature's resources. If human habitat was being destroyed and humans rather than animals and plants were the victims, we'd call it ethnic cleansing. And I have to ask, Where's the planet's night, night watchman on our threatened and endangered species? Where is he? The challenge of both connecting children with nature and species preservation to avoid genocide is in our space and time where we can make a difference. It's a huge challenge. And if any group in America can meet this challenge, it's the National Wildlife Federation. This is Ranger Rick's bandwidth it's our turf, it's our heritage, it's our legacy since 1936, and it must be our future legacy as well. We need to recapture the spirit of social and political, political activism that Ding Darling captured so well in his 1936 cartoon um, of NWF's demands to Congress. Right at the top of that capital, the demand was sympathy is not enough. What we want is action. Now, we know how to do it, because NWF has been doing it since 1936. It's better positioned with its organizational structure and the footprint of its 49 state and territorial affiliates across this nation more than any other organization. The time to act is now, right now. We had great political activism back in the 1930s. In the 1960s and 70s, we passed 22 major pieces of legislation that protected the environment, like the Wilderness Act, the Endangered Species Act, the Clean Air and Water Acts, etc. Because all, because the environmental conscience of the nation made this an ethical and moral imperative. We rallied around what was right for our nation. We had civility and common sense 50 years ago. Politicians did what was right for the country, not what was for their own personal uh, expediency or political party. There is so much partisanship in this country today, no one can speak on this issue and be heard. We talk past each other in sound bites. The conservation of our at-risk species is a moral and not a political issue. Partisan affiliations on both sides of the aisle cannot prevent us from taking up a moral and ethical cause that affects our children and future generations. Our kids are out of bounds when it comes to partisanship. NWF can be the voice Americans can hear and recognize that resonates within their hearts and souls. So our children and theirs will never suffer from genocide's consequences. They can live in a world where the beautiful engaging species like the monarch butterfly or the whooping crane still reign. Leadership today requires true, true collaboration if each of us can seize this mission in our hearts, a change of heart can begin right here in this room. It's something we all understand, and it's a legacy that the National Wildlife Federation and in the people in this room are uniquely positioned to seize. Ladies and gentlemen, we are the stewards of the future. Carpe diem. Thank you.